Hey everybody, this is DM Mike, and uh, this is not a campaign diary, this is just an editorial. Uh, things I've been thinking about uh, as a dungeon master. I'm part of many, many groups, as probably you are too, as, you, as you've played in D&D as a player or as a DM. And there's one thing that often comes up in all these groups, and these groups have thousands of people, and there's just tens of thousands of people. And there's one word that comes up that will get so much vitriol thrown at you. And so much strong opinion uh, about how much you're doing wrong with your campaign when you use the word cutscene. All right, cutscenes. Uh, this is like the C word of the Dungeons and Dragons universe. Like, you know, it's just like it's almost taboo uh, to say uh, this word and to use this method in storytelling at your table. And you, you go, test me, test me. Go into one of your groups and just ask people what they think about cutscene. Or like, hey guys, I'm thinking about putting a cutscene here. What do you guys think? Oh boy, you're going to open up a waterfall. Matter of fact, you're, you broke the dam. There's all kinds of stuff going to come out there and just destroy you once you do it. Now, don't get me wrong, you're going to get some positive comments. I would be one of those positive comments. Uh, but most likely, you're going to get a lot of vitriol. You're going to get a lot of people just like, hey, you're playing your game wrong, buddy. Wrong. And I have, look, I, I don't like sitting here as a DM preaching to you about what really works well you know like you know what do you know everything you're doing is wrong what i do is perfect i know not everything that i do is going to work for everybody you know people don't like sometimes don't like using you know multimedia i use google slides up here for my D, &D campaigns i use tabletop simulator and digital maps and i actually put ac cards up here i'm trying to find a way to put initiative on the screen so i don't have to worry about it so i'm there's all kinds of things that I do, including ambient effects around the room. You can't see it, but there's speakers everywhere. Um, and the use of cutscenes, right? Now, look, cutscenes just turned into this dirty word with Dungeons and & Dragons. And I find that cutscenes are actually pretty impactful and important to Dungeons and & Dragons. And I think it's just how you're using them. Right, and it always depends on your group and your people and who you're, you know, who you're playing with, who, who may just have disdain for them. Of course, you don't want to bust out a cutscene because they hate them, right? So it's all about your groups. But the general consensus is that cutscenes are wrong. You should never do it. It just slows the game down. It causes problem. Nobody wants to hear it. And I'll tell you, I honestly think um, that I want to say it's wrong as a general opinion. It's just overall wrong, right? Because so many things work for your players and you as a DM compared to others, right? It just, it depends on what you do. Now, I want to say cutscenes are very, very good. They're a lot of fun. They can be used as foreshadowing elements. They can actually progress the plot in a lot of different ways. But I think it does get down to how you present them. Now, I present cutscenes in two major ways, right? One of them being the actual radio drama, which is very very effective when it comes to presenting a cutscene because D&D is all up here and there's nothing that goes all up here like a radio drama, right? It works perfectly. I use Adobe Audition, I uh, use uh, specialized sound effects, I use, you know, I use real music that people like Jerry Goldsmith, James Horner, John Williams, you know, well, John Williams is too recognizable, I kind of stay away from him. But, you know, I use real music because it's just for my home game. I'm not making money off this. It's just for me. Um, but I use all that kind of stuff, and I try to give it a high production value. And it's attuned to my players. It's important to my players. It has my players in it, the enemies, and the decisions they've made all reflected in the cutscene. There's a million things you can do with a cutscene. So that's one way, probably I'd say the number one way, to present a cutscene and have it very, very effective and get people's attention. And two is the narrative, just an open narrative. And what I do sometimes is I have music playing and I narrate to the music. I know I've talked about this before in many campaign diaries and radio dramas. Um, and I actually have a little tiny series, which I think I'm sure nobody's watched, about how to use music in your um, campaigns and whatnot and, and the effectiveness of cutscenes and how you could deploy them at your table. And I usually will sometimes, every once in a while, I do a live cutscene, which is done directly to music, it's practice, I know what I want to say, I know what I want to do, and it's time with the music, and of course that's very effective as well. So this is probably geared towards people who are new to DMing, but look, don't shy away from the cutscene, okay? I, here's the thing where I think sometimes people go wrong with a cutscene. It's the diatribe. Every time a villain steps onto the battlefield or into your players' lives, no matter where they're at, if you're going on long-winded diatribes, yes, that is exhausting and people get tired of it. People want to, you know, like uh, the Han Solo movie, the recent one, the Star Wars one where the bad guy's delivering his speech and like three words in, Han Solo shoots him. 
It's like it's totally unexpected. That's what players want to do <laughs> when somebody starts going on a diatribe. So if all your cutscenes are nothing are just that, then yes, I would say, look, you need to shake that up. Do it every once in a while, but it should be like one out of 60 that are done that way, all right? So that's one, I think, fault people do with cutscenes. And you don't have to do it all the time. Look, I have five hours plus of cutscenes on my radio, on my site. So you can go to my SoundCloud, you can go to Audio Mac, and you can see them all there. Five hours. Maybe even more than that, five and a half, maybe close to six. I don't know. I'm not sure anymore. But there's plenty there. And those are all the examples of cutscenes. And see, people also think cutscenes of just being like this diatribe that a villain gives. But there's many ways to use cutscenes. You can use them as that. You could do a diatribe. You could also do an introductory piece uh, that introduces the characters to a location. I have one for El Terrell. I have one for Waterdeep. I have one for um, uh, the Castle in the Swamp and Hold the Dragon Queen. I think there's one or two else. I have like maybe like five or so that I call those tone pieces that set things up. I have a cutscene that's for travel montages. Uh, they're very specific. It's not just a general one, but a specific one depending on what they're riding, what's going on, like from griffins to horses and what's going on around them to describe the area. There are a lot of ways to use cutscenes, but I think over time, DMs have pigeonholed cutscenes to be this one thing and this one and only thing, and this is how we do it. And, and yeah, I can understand to some degree people thinking it sucks, it's boring, and I don't want it at my table. So look, expand your horizons with cutscenes. Don't avoid cutscenes. I would just try, I would just add, I would encourage you to try once. I've given so many videos and tips about this uh, on my site. And the truth of the matter is I've, I never engage with cutscene talk, like except for, you know, this right here. I'm never going to go into a forum and, and uh, start that topic. You'll never see that. But I will respond to people who put, go into those forums from Reddit to Facebook groups and say, guys, I'm going to think about doing a cutscene. What do you think? I always encourage it. I always encourage it. And sometimes I'll lay down samples for them to look at so they can get an idea of how you can expand upon this and make it bigger and better uh, and actually engage your players, but not just do that villainous, eloquent, um, you know, diatribe the villain always goes, goes on to when your player's just sitting there twitting their thumbs waiting to throw the dagger in his eye, All right? So, I don't know, guys. Just an opinion piece. Just want to talk about cutscenes. Look, they're not bad. They're awesome. Um, just you got to... Think outside the box with them, and I guarantee you, you're going to increase for similitude at your table, and people are going to have a really engaging time with them. And look, I have cutscenes going upwards to 15 minutes, okay? Oh my God! 15 minutes. Now, I think if you don't know me, and you don't know my players, you don't know the context, you don't know the adventure at all that we're a part of, it's going to sound like, hell no would I do that. I, I couldn't sit there for 15 minutes. Let me tell you. It goes by like that. Absolutely. Because when you're invested in it, it's a different experience. But if you're just, you know, hearing me talk about this and saying 15 minute cutscene, I'm, okay, I'm out of here. I'm leaving. No, it's not the way it is at all. It's actually engaging and it's talking about what you're doing in the campaign, how you're acting in the campaign, and what the enemies, how they're responding in their secret layers, how they're responding to you and how you're affecting them. So guys, that's it. That's all I wanted to talk about. I just wanted to get that off my chest. I just saw a couple posts this past couple weeks and I thought, man, these poor people, these poor people, these cutscenes are awesome. We don't need to jump on their back like they're Julius Caesar and start stabbing in the back. That's because that's not what it looks like. Some people comes in the forums, hey guys, what about cutscenes? And then all the knives come out and it's just like, <laughs> no, it's awesome. Give it some breathing room. Think outside the box. Look, go to my SoundCloud. Go to my Audio Mac. That'll give you some, um, you know, uh, some ideas to start with. Look at my channel. You know, I've got plenty of cutscene videos, like probably thirty or forty of them, to show how I do things, um, and you'll get some great ideas. And I'll tell you, players will love it. All right, guys, that's it. I'll see you in the next one.